Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can build this modern looking interface with Python. So we're going to be using Tkinter or actually an external library that is somewhat related to Tkinter to build this modern interface. When I say modern, I mean that this interface follows modern design standards. It doesn't look like it came out of the 1990s as some UIs usually do with Python. So this is what we're going to build today. It's going to be a simple to do app to get you started. This video is it's totally beginner friendly so you can follow along even if you do not know Tkinter or are not very familiar with it. So this video you can definitely follow along. The to-do app works as follows. So first things first, here you have this interface. You can type in any task that you would like to do. So for example, let's say drink coffee and then you can press add and what this does is it adds the drink coffee to your interface. So you can see now we have a list. So I can add something else. I can say go to work and then if I press add, you can see it also gets added. Now this is a scrollable frame. We'll talk more about this throughout the video, but basically you should be able to scroll up and down if you add more and more of these different tasks. So I'm going to show you how to build this step by step. Source code is in the description as always and without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to close this and open up VS Code. So I'm using VS Code. You can use any text editor that you like so long as you're able to run Python. Now, this is where I'm going to write my code inside this file called GUI.py. You can name the file anything you want, but this is what I choose to name it. So it's called GUI.py. So the library that we're going to use is not the standard Tkinter library that comes with Python. It's actually a library called Custom Tkinter. Now, Custom Tkinter, what it does is it takes some of these elements from Tkinter, some of these widgets, and it add some styling to them, making it look much more presentable and much more modern. So I can import it as follows. I say import custom Tkinter and I choose to call it CTK. To install custom Tkinter, what you need to do is you need to pull up a terminal. So I'm just going to do that. Now I'm using the integrated terminal that comes with VS Code, but you can use any terminal. So you can use your plain old CMD. So I will just open this up and I will simply type pip install custom Tkinter. So this is how you would install it. Then you would press enter and then you wait for it to finish. Now, in my case, I already have it, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to close my terminal and come back to the code. So as you can see, we have to import custom Tkinter. For abbreviation, I chose to call it CTK. You can call it whatever you like, but this is more of a common way to do it. All right, so now I've imported it. Let's actually get started with building our UI. So first things first, I'm going to define a root widget. So if you are familiar with Tkinter, this stuff is going to be very easy. But if you're not, don't worry, I'm going to explain it step by step. So I define my root widget. This will be ctk.ctk. Notice here that this is an uppercase C, an uppercase T, and a lowercase k. This is usually how it will look throughout the code. So it will always be uppercase C, uppercase T, and a lowercase k. All right, what is this? So this is our root widget or our main window in Tkinter. The way Tkinter works is that widgets are nested inside each other in a hierarchy. So these widgets will all exist inside one main widget. This main widget, we choose to call it root. So this will be like a big box and everything else will be inside of it. So we have called it root. Now, if I run my application, as you can see, nothing occurs. We don't see any interface yet. The reason is we're missing a crucial line of code. So the line of code is the following. We say root dot main loop. So in Tkinter and in custom Tkinter as well, this is, works the same way. We have an infinite event loop that's currently running so long as your interface is showing. So when you close your interface, this main loop will stop. So it's an infinite loop. So long as your interface is open, so long as it's running, you're not able to do anything else. So if I write code here under the main loop, this code will be blocked. So now if I run it, I should be able to see my interface. And as you can see here, we have this small interface, nothing to it yet, but this is how it looks like. Now, one thing you can notice is already by default, the bar here, the bar on top is in black, which is not really the way it worked in Tkinter. So in Tkinter, we usually had these lighter colors and the bar was not in black. So this is one of the first differences we can spot between CTK as well as Tkinter. All right, now we have our interface. Let's start adding some code to actually start adding things to our interface. Now, before we do that, first, we want to specify the geometry of our window. So you saw how it opened up as a very small window. So to specify the geometry, simply I will say root.geometry is 750 by 450. This means my window size will be 750 by 450, as you can see right here. Now, this window size is suitable for me, for my machine and my display. 
you can go ahead, do some trial and error and figure out exactly what size you want. So this will not look the same on every machine depending on what you have and on your screen. So play around with it. If you don't like these numbers, go ahead, change them, modify them and you will see a different size UI as you launch your application. All right, so we've changed the geometry. The last thing we want to do before adding new widgets is change the window title. So you saw it said CTK at the top. So we're just going to say that it will say to do app. Now running it again, as you can see, it says to do app here on the title. So now we have a title. All right, perfect. So we want to get started by adding things to our app. So we want to add widgets, labels, buttons, things like that. We'll start by adding a label. This will be the title of our application. Now to add this label, I will call it title underscore label and I will use something called CTK dot CTK label. Now, if we were using regular tkinter, we would have said TK dot label simply. So we say CTK dot CTK label. We specify here root, which will be the parent of this widget. So remember at the start of the video, when I was explaining that in tkinter, all widgets belong to a certain hierarchy. So they are within each other. They are inside of each other. There is one main widget, which is the root in this case. It's like a biggest box. Everything else will sit inside of this box. So think of it like this. I'm just going to whip up paint real quick and I'm just going to draw this box. So this is our window. This is our root widget. Now I'm going to have a label here. So my label, if I want to type stuff here, which will be like to do app or something like that, this will exist inside of my larger box. So if this is the label, it exists inside my larger box. So the parent of this label will be the root. So this is why we specify root here to say that the parent of this label of this widget is actually the root. All right, next we specify the text. So the text is just the text that will appear on the label. So we say text is equal to daily tasks. Then we specify the font. So we will say font is equal to ctk.ctk font. Again, this is part of the custom tkinter library. It's not part of regular tkinter. We say the size is going to be 30. Again, I chose this. You can choose any size that you like. And the weight is bold. You don't have to add this, but I chose to add it myself. So this is all up to you regarding the customization of these widgets. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to pack it. So we say title label dot pack. Now, what do we mean by pack? Usually in tkinter, anytime you want to add a widget, such as a label to the screen, what you need to do is you actually have to create it. So first things first here, you see we created it using ctk.ctk label. And the second thing you have to do is you have to pack place or grid. This is called positioning the widget on the screen. So I positioned it using the pack function. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about how this works and what's the difference between all three, but basically you have to say pack for your widget to appear on the screen. If we actually comment this out and run the code, you will not see any label on the screen yet, because as I said, you have to pack it in addition to creating it. So now if we run it again, as you can see, we have our title right here, daily tasks. Perfect. So we have our first widget and we added it to our application. Now, one thing we actually want to change is if you take a look here, you can see it's really close to the edge of the window. It's really close to the top. There's not enough spacing here. And to make our design look better, we actually want to add some spacing. To do so, we use something called padding. So padding will help us add some space between our widget and the external widget. In this case, this is the root or the window itself. Now to add padding, it's very simple. You add it here inside the pack function. So I say pad X, which means the padding along the X axis and pad Y, which is the padding along the Y axis or vertically. So I choose to add a padding of 10 along the X axis and a padding of Y along, along the Y axis. So along the vertical axis here, I'm saying 40, 20. What do I mean by this? This means that it will have 40 at the top and 20 at the bottom. So this is how you can add two different padding for both the top and the bottom. So now if I run it, as you can see, you, our daily tasks label actually moved. And now we have the space here or the padding. All right. Perfect. So we've created our first widget. The second widget we're going to create is going to be a scrollable frame. This is where all our to do's and tasks are going to sit. So to create the scrollable frame, you just need to do the following CTK dot CTK scrollable frame. We save this in a variable called scro scrollable frame. You can name the variable, whatever you want. Again, the parent is root and I'm just going to give it a width of 500 and a height of 200. So if we go back to paint, let me just visualize how this is supposed to look. First things first, you have the label here. 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the scrollable frame here. So now I have another box inside my larger box. Okay, now I have it. Again, you, if we run this, you will not see anything. So we actually have to pack it as well. So we run scrollable frame dot pack. This should add it to our interface. Running it, as you can see now, we have our daily tasks table and we have this scrollable frame. It has a bar here and the frame has a different color by default. Now, one thing I want to note. So if you are familiar with Tkinter, the regular old Tkinter, by default, frames actually don't have a different color and they're not visible. So that you, it would be here, it would have the same color, so we wouldn't be able to see it. So this is another benefit of custom Tkinter. It shows you that there are different colors for all the frames. This way you're better able to differentiate between them and it looks much more visually appealing. All right, so we've added the scrollable frame. The last thing I want to add is the button. So now I have the button. I called it add button. This will enable me to add some to do's to my application. So this will be ctk.ctk button. Again, the parent is the root and then the text is add and it will have a width of 500. This is to match the width to that of the frame. Okay. So again, I'm adding this into root. So if we visualize in paint, so let's say here, this will be here a button. So this is our button. Again, this is a very rough draft, but I'm just trying to show you and visualize how these widgets are inside the larger widget. Now going back and running it, actually before we run it, we also have to pack. This time I'm giving it a padding along the Y axis of 20, just to make things spaced out a little. And now as you can see, we have our basic interface, the label, the scrollable frame, as well as the button. The button, by default, it has both a regular color and a hover color. So hover means when I hover on top of the button, when I put my mouse on it, it has a different color. And if I press on it, you can see another color flashes very briefly. Okay, so now I have the button. What I want to do next is the functionality to actually add some to-dos. Now, before I get there, I need to have an entry here for me to actually type my tasks and to-dos. Now, to add this entry, it's also very simple. It's another type of widget within CTK. So this will be ctk.ctk entry. So I will save this inside a variable called entry, and it will be inside the scrollable frame. So let's pause for a second. Why is this not inside root? As you saw before, the label was inside root, the frame was inside root, and the add button was inside root. However, the entry itself is not. It's inside the frame. Going back to paint. So I have my largest box. This is root. And here I have the label, the frame, and the button. So I'm trying to place my entry here inside of the frame. So now we have a sort of nesting or a hierarchy. So we have the entry, and then it's outside of it, there is the frame. And then outside of the frame, there is the root. So this is how this works in Tkinter. So this is why we specify the parent to be scrollable frame. The second thing we specify is the placeholder text. This will be the text that will appear on the entry. I'll show it to you in just a second. So it will be add to do. And of course, I have to pack it. So now running it. As you can see, we now have our entry, so you can type stuff here. Of course, if I press on add, nothing happens yet. But as you can see, we were able to add it here. And you see that add to do. Okay, so I can't see it anymore. Let me read on it and show you. So add to do is the text that is present here. So it's the placeholder text before you start typing. All right. So one thing we notice is that it's very small. It doesn't take up the full space inside the frame, which makes it not look that great. So why is it so small? Now to fix it, all we need to do is the following. So I say fill equal X. So before we were specifying things like padding, here I'm specifying the fill. But what fill means is take up as much space as possible along the X axis. This means take up as much space as possible horizontally inside this frame. Now running it, as you can see now, it takes up the whole space inside the frame and it looks much better, much more appealing. All right. Perfect. Now we have added the entry. What we want to do next is we want the functionality that when I type stuff and I press on the button, what happens? It should be added inside of the frame. How? We'll see that in just a second. So to actually fix this, we need to add the following. This, there is this property to our button. It says command equal add to do. Now what command does is basically it says this function Call it whenever the button is clicked. So when, when add to do is clicked, when add button is clicked, 
it will go ahead and launch the add to do function. It will execute it. Now, where is this function? Of course, we have to define it ourselves. So we say def add to do here. I will add the code for this function. So when the button is clicked, this function will be executed and this code will be ran. The first thing is I want to get the text that the user inputted into the entry. So to do so, you see here to do is equal to entry dot get. So from my entry, I will get the text. This will be the text that the user returned. All right, perfect. Now I have the text. What I want to do is I want to add it to my frame. Now to add it, I'm going to use something called the label. So similar to how here I created a CTK label, I will create another one, but this time I will put it inside the scrollable frame. So now I'll say CTK label, scrollable frame and the text will be equal to to do so the text will be whatever the user wrote in the entry at the start so i'll demo this for you in just a second all right we created the label of course we have to pack it so now pretty straightforward now let's actually test it out so if i run it let's bring this here so let's see drink coffee if i press on add as you can see, this label was created and it was added to the scrollable frame. Now I can go ahead and say, go to work, press on add. And as you can see, it has been added as well. Now, one minor change we can make is that here, every time I type a to do, it's staying. So I have to go through the trouble of erasing it using the backspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, by default, clear the entry after I add it to the to do. So let's go back here and simply we add one line of code. We say, entry.delete and what we do here is we say 0 ctk.end what this means is you start at index 0 so start at the very first character in this entry the very first letter and continue till the end so we're not deleting a few characters here and there we're deleting the entire thing from 0 to end so now if we run it let's say drink coffee and we press on add or go to work, press on add. As you can see, it's being cleared each time. So I'm just going to add a few. So I went ahead and added a few to do's. As you can see now, this scrollable frame is an action. If we scroll, we can go ahead and see the different to do's that we've added. So this is the benefit of using a scrollable frame. We can add as many tasks as we want because then we're just able to scroll between them. So that's really it for this video. So in this video, we were able to build this app using custom Tkinter, which was able to provide us with a more modern and more presentable looking interface than the regular old Tkinter library. So please let me know if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.